In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a relative frequency histogram using Excel. So to give you a preview, this will be the output that we'll, we will produce today. And uh, it's the weekly spending on entertainment by 40 students. So you can see here, so some students spend less than $10 per week, and some students spend more than $200 or $200. So this basically gives us a graphical representation of the total, I mean the whole distribution of spendings. To start, let's make sure that we have already installed the analysis tool that we'll use for this exercise. If we go to File, and uh, under Options, there is a menu called Add-ins. So click on the Add-ins, and then you can see the package is called Analysis 2 Pack. Normally, this package is under the inactive section, so we need to activate that so that it, can, it will show up in the active section. To do this, go to Manage Excel Add-ins, and then under the drop-down menu, click on Excel Add-ins and click Go. And then basically, we'll che check this box, check Analysis 2 Pack, click on OK. To confirm that it's already installed, so we'll go to data, and uh, you can see here, so data analysis, this button is already showing up here. That means we already installed the package. So now we are ready to start to create this histogram. The first thing to do is to find out what's the maximum and minimum value of those 40 observations. And the reason of doing this is basically because we want to know what's, how wide is the total range. We want to know what is the minimum number here and what is the maximum number here. Given those two, then we can decide how many bins we want to create and what's the width of each bin. So that's the goal here. To do this, we'll use the descriptive statistics function in the two package. So click on data analysis and choose Descriptive Statistics, and click on OK. And now you can see there's a pop-up window. So in this window, again, we'll choose the input range as our uh, data set. So that's the 40 observations. Okay. Here it is. Oops, I'm not good at this. Okay, so this is our input range, and then we can choose output range. This function will basically give us a table, a descriptive statistic table, and here we are choosing where we want to create this table. And uh, basically, I will choose just the open cell on this worksheet. And probably here, so that's N3. Uh, here. And then I will check the box, so summary statistics, and I click OK. So if you do this, you can see a new a table is created here, and it, in this table, we have the minimum and the maximum. So that's basically the minimum number of spending in our, in our sample, and uh, the maximum spending, so 7 and 200. Given those two numbers, basically we, we have a rough idea of how wide is the range. It's about from 0 to 200. So here I decided to create 20 bins, 20 intervals, and each interval has a width of 10. That means the intervals will be from 0 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, things like that. To make this concrete, uh, I will generate basically 20 numbers starting from 10, and it will increase by 10 each time. So I have 10, 20, 30, uh, up until 200. So that will be our bin values. That's the end point of each interval. And then we'll go back to the data analysis to package and then choose histogram. 
and again we'll choose the input range as the data the sample and then we'll choose the bin range as the numbers we just created that'll be 10 from uh, from 10 to 200 and then we'll again choose alpha range as any open cell on this worksheet here I will be selecting charge output as well so this function will give us a frequency table as well as a chart if you're selecting this option um, let's see what that chart is so the chart is also a histogram but it's a little bit different from our histogram our target histogram because the histogram is a frequency histogram not a relative frequency histogram. So here we have the percentages, but here we only have the, the count. So that's not what we want, and we'll discard this, and we'll work with this frequency table. Basically what we'll do is to create a relative frequency column, and uh, we'll generate a number that equals to frequency divided by the total number of observations. It will be 40 here, so that's 4 divided by 40 in this category, and we have the percentage as 0.01. And we'll apply the same formula to all the categories and get the relative frequencies. And you can see here, so whenever you create a frequency table, Excel will automatically generate a category called more. So that's above the largest value you define. So we have 200 here, so this category means that any observation that is above 200. We don't have any uh, students have like more than 200 spending, so we don't have, we have a zero here. Now we are ready to create the, the histogram. So select the relative frequency column. And then we'll insert a bar chart. And you can see after we do this, we get a chart that's very similar to what we have here. The only uh, mean in terms of the height and in terms of the categories, the, the number of things. But the difference between those two charts is that first we have gaps here. So we have gaps between the bars. That's one thing we need to modify. Another is access labels. So we have 10, 20, 30, those numbers on the on this chart, but we have only one, two, three, four, five. So that's that's something we need to modify as well. So click on any of the numbers here and then right click on the area, select uh, choose select date, and then here we can edit the access label. And then click edit and then choose basically the, the label range as the beans, bean values. And uh, then click OK. You can see the labels have changed and it's already reflected on the, the graph. The next thing will be uh, minimizing the gap here. So click on the bars and then right click and then choose Format Data Series. And then under the options, we can choose series options, and then we can basically make the gap width to be zero. And then we can go to the fill and the line option, and then make the borders to be solid lines. And then also make sure the color is black so that the, the borders are actually visible. And then we close. Now you can see. This is very similar, it's almost the same as what we have here. And then that, the final step is basically to change the title to be uh, weekly spending on entertainment. Then we finished creating our histogram and it gives us it gives us the distribution of the spendings for those for the students. So this is the end of our video and thanks for watching.